Okay, so this is the uh, tutorial for Lab 6, the stratigraphic interpretation, including our Harris matrix. This is the lab handout. You can get the link already uh, on Canvas. You can, uh, as usual, you can file and save it as your own. Um, read through the introduction. It sort of goes through some of the stuff we talked about in class today uh, and gives you some terms to be able to use and then talks a little bit about the process that we uh, went over in the uh, in the lecture about how to read stratigraphy and build a Harris matrix using the simple graphical logic. So the first part that I want you to do is to do an example profile, essentially a, a, a made up, very fairly simple stratigraphic profile you get some information about each different um, stratum over here. And uh, what you'll do is to sort of use the logic uh, in the handout that we talked about in class to build a Harris matrix. Now, there's a couple of links here, a couple of videos about how to do Harris matrices that you might find useful. What I want you to do, you can look at those videos. Then I want you to puzzle through this and I want you to make a drawing of your actual Harris matrix for this profile right here. And at the bottom, I include, uh, I only have one of these. You can use, maybe copy it or make a, you know, print it out twice. You can use this sheet to draw your Harris matrix and, you know, have a key of your various strata over here. It's just sort of a convenience. You can do it on whatever paper you want. But once you've done your matrix, you can check your work by looking at an answer key. And I want you to wait to look at the answer key until you've done it. But the whole point of this one is not to get necessarily the correct answer, it's to learn by doing and then check and to see where and why your drawing is the same or different from the official answer key. And that helps you understand how to build a matrix. And then you're going to apply your new knowledge at a real archaeological site that you're going to look in 3D. So to do that, you're going to first have to draw a profile from the 3D model and you're going to have to choose which site you want to do. And so you can click through all of these and they're going to take you to a separate website called Sketchfab. And Sketchfab is intensive because it's 3D. And so when you click on it, you know, you're going to want to make sure all your tabs are closed and you don't have any other um, software running on your computer. OK, um, it may crash. You may want to choose a different browser if this browser that you're using doesn't work. I'm using Chrome and it does work, but it does do this occasionally. And as I'm recording this video, I'm wondering if I'm overtaxing my computer. And I really hope that I can get this kind of going. Please, fingers crossed, don't die on me. I may have to close some other tabs to be able to do this. Let me just close some of these ones that I'm not using just to, you know, so I can follow my <laughs> my advice to you. So this is it, right? And it's 3D. You can swing it around like this. And at first you're going to be like, whoa, I can't control it. So let me just walk you through how to control it. Firstly, you can click and move the mouse and it just sort of swings it around some predefined center axis. And it's a really unwieldy, but you can at least move it around, sort of experiment moving it only just a little bit. Don't move your mouse very much. If you have a scroll wheel or if you can use two fingers or something to scroll on your touchpad, you can zoom in and out. The other way to zoom is to hold your control key down and then to click and drag up to zoom in and drag down to zoom out. A very useful feature is to hold the shift key, click, and then you can move it around this way. Instead of swinging it around the axis, you can kind of move it. And so what you'll want to do is to maybe like, if I'm wanting to look at this profile, swing it around uh, and then click up top and swing it up until I'm kind of looking at it. So I, you know, in the orientation I want, hold the shift key and then move it around until it's centered and then either control click and drag up or use the mouse wheel to zoom in until I fill the frame with the profile that I'm interested in. And of course, you can zoom in and out as you like. But what's really cool about this, rather than just looking at a photograph, is that when you want to look at it from a different angle, 
you can. And that can help you a lot. It's a lot more like being there. So a couple of additional tools is that um, if you want to have a bigger window, you can go full screen or you can go theater mode. Theater mode is kind of helpful. Um, you can also, if you have like an Oculus or something like that, or you have Google Cardboard, you can click the view in VR, get a link for your mobile phone. If you have Google Cardboard or something like that, where you put your phone into it, you can look at it in 3D or a link for a desktop where you have a special VR viewer. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you have that, there are a couple of settings. Uh, if you're having a hard, uh, you know, if you, if you want to change the way you navigate, you can do it in a way that I personally hate, which is the first person. It, I don't know, it moves opposite of what you think. It's like as if you're walking through it. But for most of these profiles, that's going to be a terrible way to interact with it. So I, I recommend you leave it on orbit and go back to the way, it, you know, the way I showed you before. Um, secondly, if you scroll below it, there's a blurb usually. Now, this may be more or less informative. This tells us that we're looking at a World War I spruce mill or the remains there of it. So that gives us some dating information. Um, if we click up here, some of them have annotations, not all of them, but some of them do. And that can tell you this is foundation rubble from the spruce mill that sat at this site. Some of them have a lot of annotations. Some of them have no annotations. Some of them have markers like uh, literal analog markers like this pin flag over here. Let me see if I can get us navigating in a way that we can see it. Um, oops. You have to take some practice just to get used to it. Okay, so here you can see a pin flag. So some of them have pin flags put at different strata and it will help you figure out you know, the stratigraphy. But however you decide uh, to figure out the dating, whether there's any information or not for the site that you choose, you're gonna to need to draw a profile. And as an example of that, I've given you in the lab uh, a couple of links to profiles, you know, some information about drawing profiles from a couple of different places, and also uh, a link to a profile that I drew in one of my sites. So this is a, a ancient lake bed, you know, from the Neolithic period, more or less, in northern Jordan. And here's a photograph of the actual profile that we excavated, and you can see some of the stratigraphy. You can zoom in on this if you want. Then you can see the profile that I drew while I was in the field. And this is a scale profile. So I was out there and I put this horizontal line, line level, perfectly level line. And I have a tape measure and I went along and I measured offsets very uh, precisely from this horizontal line to the surface, to the interfaces of each of the different strata. And I translated those to my scale drawing and uh, I wrote a scale which shows that one of these biggish squares is equal to 26 centimeters in, in the real world. Now that's a weird scale and I just chose it because I wanted to get the biggest drawing possible and make my, my life easier. The weird thing is that I'm going metric measurements to this is inch uh, graph paper. It's all I had at the time. So it's not ideal. I would obviously prefer to have used metric graph paper so I could have had a more even scale like 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 or something like that. Um, and then on the back of it I have a key that tells us in this case it's color coded what the different strata are. And you know I don't have the best handwriting it's just you know it's just me but um, maybe you can zoom in and see what I wrote and you can kind of try and write something similar. And then finally I have the digital version. Now you don't have to make up as clean a digital version as I've made here, but I thought I would include it so that you have a little clearer sense of what we end up wanting to do with these profiles is to make a really nice clean copy of the profile. And you can see here all the straight up from one all the way up to, what is that, uh, seven, no, five, eight, something like that at the top. And this is all pretty straightforward, so the Harris matrix is really simple. You just one on top of the other, that's it, to the top your site will be a little bit more complex than that. But you ideally want to get some kind of profile initially, and you want to label the strata so that when you go 
in the lab to make your matrix of the profile that you are looking at uh, in the field or you know in your in your field uh, 3d image you can correlate the profile and the matrix because you're using the same reference system and looking at it in the sort of scalish view that you draw in profile is going to help you immensely to create the Harris matrix as opposed to just looking at the 3D image. And you're going to want to go back and forth between all of these. So at the bottom of the, of the handout, there's some graph paper that you can use. It says site mapping sheet, but you can use it to uh, draw your profile. Try to do your best to figure out the scale. Um, you're going to have to guess in some ways. Uh, one way to guess is that excavation units are usually pretty regular. So between this nail and that nail is probably one meter or two meters. And so you can just sort of use that to help figure it out. Um, you're going to have to sort of do it as a sketch map rather than a true scale map, simply because there's no way to do it properly to scale in these, uh, in these images. But you'll do your best. You'll create a profile. And then you will create a Harris matrix out of that. And when you're done with all of that, as typical, you have some write-up to do. So you want to be taking notes the whole time. You want to keep your uh, matrices from the example um, and the one you eventually make from your site. And you want to have your profile drawing also from the site along with the key. And those are the notes that you'll turn in. And then your write-up is here.